I said you soft, so what? What you gonna do? What? Don't no man call me soft. I hate that, all right? right wait, let me slow you down, cause I'm a man. I called you soft. What you taking in all this air for, Claude? What you feeling, huh? Cause I said soft? Cause I said soft, so what? I said I spell it. S-O-F capital T. Soft. Huh? How you like that? What you gonna do, Claude? What you gonna do, huh? This may offend a lot of people, don't really care. I personally have a problem with soft men. Now, that can be a little bit subjective, but sometimes it's actually pretty easy and obvious for some people. Now, you can't always tell who is uh, homosexual, but what you, what you can tell is who is effeminate. That is a sin. Well, what are some examples of effeminate? Well, how about this? I don't know what Kirk Franklin is going for, but he actually looks like someone from the old Police Academy movies when they went to the Blue Oyster Lounge. <music> Effeminate men have a particular characteristic that is just soft, that is gentle, that is almost ladylike, and you see it come out in various different ways, sometimes in the way they sing. <laughs> It is okay to have a little bit of bass in your voice. You can't control that in terms of how deep your voice is, but you can control how high it goes. In case you didn't know, it is not good for a man to drop it. It's not good for a woman to do it either, but a man, listen, these are things that you just couldn't imagine a man doing, and if you did, you knew why he was doing it. The sad part is we now have pastors who dress a certain way, who dress to be like the world, who want to be conformed to this world, and it blurs a line. Is there something questionable about that person? We don't know. You gonna golf every day? Now when she said that, I was like, is that an option? Because if it is, you are more fine than I ever realized. <laughs> and so when you dress like that, it's hard to tell. It's certainly hard to tell when you are wearing skinny jeans, tight jeans. Let me make it abundantly clear to all the women. It is uncomfortable for a man to wear those. And any man that's doing so, he is sacrificing comfort for fashion, for a particular look, to send a signal maybe. All the men that are wearing skinny jeans that want to send a response, fine, go ahead. And I have a response back for you. Do not act as though what you're doing is appropriate. The Bible says, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the earth? And he gives some lists, some things, and he deals with one, fornicators, idolaters, adulterers. Then he has these two words, effeminate nor homosexual. Now, the homosexual, that's obvious. That is from the Greek word arsenikoitai, which is men bed, is men who bed other men. But then this other word here for effeminate, we have this word malakoi, which means soft. If you are a soft man, that is a sin. Why? Because you are projecting something that you should not. It doesn't even matter. Notice he's not even talking about the intent. It's what you are projecting. He is Lord. I have no idea what he's wearing or what he's doing, but he looks like a woman. We'll deal with him in just a little bit. That shouldn't be. We've got too many pastors, too many preachers who step in the pulpit, and they're already blurring the lines between sound doctrine and bad doctrine. Now they're also blurring the line between what a woman looks like and what she should wear versus what a man looks like and what he should wear. Now, he brings up in Deuteronomy, God does, about a woman wearing clothes that pertain to a man. You shouldn't do that. And obviously, the converse is also true about a man wearing anything that looks like a woman. And so we need to be careful about what we wear because of the situation or the, the signals that we send. If you have forgotten, the Bible tells us in Genesis, he says he made them male and female. For some reason, though, some pastors simply want to say, I don't know what God's plan was or if it's okay. I wish there was something different. If I was there, maybe I would have told him, is there something in the middle you could do? Like kind of a, like a little maybe if somebody, 
But for some, it's almost as though that they are bothered or confused or wish that God would have had a different category like Mike Todd other than male and female. Well, I was born like this. I don't know how I feel. I feel you. And I wish that there was an option of other in the kingdom. I'm going to have to wrestle with what I don't even fully understand. Oh, God. Well, that should never come out of the pastor's mouth. Oh, by the way, what are you doing with your hair? We'll deal with the hair in just a little bit. But again, you're sig sending these mixed signals. The pastors don't say this because they want to be absolute. Well, why did that? I don't freaking know. I know. Honestly, I wish God would have made it so much simpler. And it was like A, B, C or D like frick. No, I'm serious. As a pastor, like, so what do you think about gay men? I don't know. You don't know you're a pastor. Not a real one, not a good one. And you wish that God would have made it simpler. He did. Have you not read that he made them both male and female? God says that in Genesis. Jesus reiterates that uh, in the Gospels. And so what are you talking about? You seem to be bothered by that. And no wonder, because he tends to give off these effeminate vibes, acting and behaving in ways that are customary with the mannerisms of a woman. They going to hell. Hell for you. Hell for your children. Hell for your grandkids. Hell. Yeah, that was pretty feminine. Like this. Ooh, that's nasty. You cannot. I like that. That just came from the spirit. You've got also these men who simply want to defend women and defend homosexuality who also have these mannerisms. Again, your hair, your mannerisms, your voice, everything about you should, if you are male, it should say male. Just as the man has to be a bride in a certain level of revelation to access a different dimension of relationship, you also have to capture the revelation of sonship, even though you're a female. This is why Galatians, amen. This is why Galatians says, in Christ, there's neither male nor female. This is why, little religious devils, women can preach. Because in Christ, there's no male or female. Again, if you were male, act like one. And then again, don't come back and give a defense for someone or something that goes counter to scripture you cannot insult and inspire the same people that you insult what are we going to do about the people who've been born this way who've been struggling with something what about the people that we think are nasty which means you need to let people know that they are in sin if you find someone that is stealing someone that's lying someone that's doing drugs are you going to not tell them that stealing, lying, or doing drugs is wrong as a sin and it's dangerous? Similarly, the same thing with someone who's struggling with their sexuality. These folks are abomination. They're nasty. Tell you what you do then. Go find every song that's been written by a gay person for the last hundred years and don't sing it in church. Okay, fine. It's not as though the straight people didn't make any songs or we can't just sing hallelujah or holy. And so I don't know what his point is, except to say that you want to cater to this crowd. Makes me wonder why a man, a man of the cloth, why a grown man, a heterosexual man would want to do that. <laughs> Certainly you're not currying favor with God. Context. It's real easy for a straight person to talk about what a gay person ought to do. But until you've spent a day in their context, you'll never understand the feelings that they have associated with the church. We don't have to spend one day, one minute, one second in the context in the shoes of someone who's struggling with homosexuality. Just like we don't have to spend one day, one hour, one second, what have you, in the same shoes or in the same context of someone who's in another sin. All we've got to go off of is the Bible. I wish that men, again, one would dress like men, men would take care of their hair like maybe a man should. I'll deal with hair in a second and would also preach the Bible the way a man of God should. Jesus said absolutely nothing about same-sex relationships. And are you telling me that this was such a hot button issue for Jesus that it just magically didn't appear in any of the, that they just forgot to mention that he talked about homosexuality? I don't buy it. First of all, Jesus did, number, two, number one, because he's got all throughout the scriptures, we see him talking about that. So 
That's incorrect. Let's just say that 3,000 years ago, that's the way God thought. Okay, but God can change God's mind. God can grow and evolve. God is, is everlasting and ever-changing. God can change God's mind. God can grow. God can evolve. God is ever-changing. Find that in the scripture. A gay person who still wants to attend church after the way the church has treated the gay community, I'm telling you, they have more faith than I do. They have more faith than a lot of you. A gay person who knows, you know what? I might not be accepted here, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Again, why do male pastors, preachers, why do you wanna defend homosexuality or why do you wanna come against those who want to also come against it? Again, you're not currying favor with God, so who then are you currying favor with or for? Any situation where you've been made to feel like the option, opt out. It really is as simple as that. You should not be a multiple choice question considering everything that you are. Matthew Stevenson, Dr. Apostle Matthew Stevenson, is one of the most egregious, one of the most effeminate men that you could ever see in the pulpit. Now, questions have, have abound about his sexuality. Won't go there, I don't know. But what I can tell you is he is without question soft and effeminate. <laughs> It's amazing that other people don't have the same sort of outrage. Now, some do, some don't. But again, Jesus makes a point about someone using the same word, Malakois, someone who's soft. He, he juxtaposes these soft men with someone like John. John was focused on the task, focused on the mission at hand. He was not focused about how he looked, how he carried himself. He was focused about doing his job, about being a person of God. Meanwhile, compare that to the, the, the Pharisees, the people that live in these kingdoms, these um, rulers, these folks who are concerned about how they look, how they dress, as Jesus called them, whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, full of dead man's bones on the inside. Notice the contrast, he says, but what did you see? Speaking about John the Baptist, a man uh, dressed in soft clothing. There's that word, malakois, the same word that we saw in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, recall a feminine, do you see these soft men dressed in soft clothing? Those who wear soft clothing are in, or those who wear soft things uh, are in the king's palace. Those who wear these soft things, those who bear, by the way, this word that's used here is the word bear. So anyone that is projecting anything soft, that's what we see too often. We see men wear that uh, with their pants. We see it in their clothes. Even men who come off as hypersexual, there's a reason for that. Don't think that when you hear and see these men that are even talking about the number of women that they've been around and so forth, there is a reason for that. We'll come back to that in just a little bit. But then someone who is even projecting this soft style with their hair. And someone will say, are you telling me, Corey, that, that having long hair or certain hairstyles can be soft? I'm saying having long hair or certain, certain hairstyles can be soft. Now, obviously, what is the length? The Bible didn't give us a length, uh, a ruler to determine, to determine what the length of a man's hair should be, but he does say, does not even nature itself teach you that if a man has long hair, it is a dishonor to him? Well, did he say that knowing full well that 2024 will come around and men will have long hair? Well, what has also increased? I'll tell you what's increased. Uh, homosexual activity has increased. Uh, the rate of divorce. Why? Because men with long hair have to take care of long hair and they want to style it. I'm not saying that having long hair is necessarily a sin, but it can get to a point to where it becomes a sin. It can get to a point to where you want to style it and look a certain way. You're so concerned about yourself, which and I'm not saying that you should walk around like an ogre, that you shouldn't have uh, good grooming habits and good hygiene habits. No, but what I'm saying is if your focus is your outer appearance, how much you look good and smell good and so forth, Therein lies a problem. That is not what God is after. The same way that he didn't want women to spend too much time in their appearance with too much makeup and things like that. Rather be beautiful on the inside, as he says, for a woman. The same for a man. Be a man. Be a man. Now, me personally, I don't really have any friends with long hair. It wasn't necessarily by design or by choice. 
that's just maybe who I am. And people like that tend to gravitate around folks who believe the same way. But a lot of these men, even those with short hair, fine, who spend more time or just as much time competing with a woman and her looks, that's a that's a problem. That is a red flag. You see soft men behaving like soft men, and sometimes it goes under the radar for some people. What do soft men do? Soft men like the company of other men, either either soft men like the company of other men other soft men sometimes but just soft but just men period they don't know how to talk to you one-on-one -on -one. if a person wants to talk to you with the crowd either online or with other people they've got to bring other people to talk to you that is a soft man i don't care how loud he gets how much he barks a real man an actual man a man's man will want to talk to you one-on-one -on -one. seen it over and over again and without fail soft men need other people around Soft men need the validation of other people. That's why they wear their hair a certain way, or that's why they wear certain clothes. That's why they wear certain pants, the tight jeans. It gets them noticed. That's why they dress the way they act. That's why they flaunt certain things. That's why they brag about themselves. Why? Because they need the attention, the validation of other men. That's what a soft man does. That's what soft men did in Jesus' day. That's why he spoke about how soft men dress, where soft men live, how soft men talk, the heart of a soft man. And just because you see a soft man with a woman, make no mistake about it, he just wants the attention of anyone. Conversation and camaraderie is fine. And in many cases with the soft man, it doesn't matter who it's from, whether it be a male or a female, which is the dangerous part. Maybe it speaks to me. Maybe my father was too hard on me. I don't know. But even just touching other men just casually, I don't even want my leg. It's going to sound crazy, but I don't even want my leg to rub up against another man's leg. I, I, that, that, would, that just bothers me. It's worse than... Uh, fingernails on a chalkboard now given a nice you know hey hand slap or what have you with a man a nice firm handshake and the kind of brotherly hug whether you kind of lean in and one arm around that's fine but what we see with some of these men today the embracing and, and the and the hanging out together and so forth and leaning on each other uh, we have a problem and the problem ends up extending itself into the pulpit which is why you always hear you constantly hear about these men falling sometime with women but even also sometimes with men. I struggled. And the struggle didn't just begin. You know, the struggle has been a struggle. And um, the conviction has been great. I didn't address what should have been addressed in my life, you know. And um, you all seen it, you know. You seen the video. One thing is sure about a soft man. He does not find his comfort and his solace in uh, Jesus in the word. If he did, he wouldn't behave that, that same way. He wouldn't act that way. He wouldn't dress that way. But because he finds his comfort, his solace, uh, his validation in other people, that's why we're going to keep having soft people, effeminate men in the pulpit. And what will they produce? Even more effeminate, even more soft men. And so if you see someone with these traits, these characteristics, I would say this, ladies and gentlemen, move away from that person.